Hi guys, I'm Maddie and in a minute I'm going to be having a chat uh, for this year's grad fest about uh, Queen's and uh, what I'm currently doing now and how Queen's helped me along the way. Um, I am going to wait a couple of minutes for some people to join us and uh, then we'll get going. Oh lovely, I can see people are joining. Hi guys, just going to wait a couple of minutes. Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all getting outside in the sunshine as well. Just going to give it another minute and then I will get going. Okay, cool. We've got quite a few people on. So uh, I'm going to have a bit of a chat to you. I hope you can all hear me. If you can't, please do let me know. Um, but I am Maddie and I graduated from Queen's in uh, 2017. Um, I've got an English and history degree. Um, and yeah, just had the absolute best time in Queen's. Loved it so much. And I'm currently uh, a secondary school teacher based in Brighton in the south of England. So um, I'm going to talk to you a bit about how I got to where I am. Um, my career path definitely wasn't always linear. I did a lot of other different things on the way. Um, and, and yeah, talk a bit about teaching, about how I find it, about... Um, what what kind of things might be different to, to what people might expect so yeah so when i uh started at queens i thought that i might want to be a teacher um and i did my first year of queens and i kind of like i loved it i loved getting involved in um different things at queens i became a student ambassador um and did lots of tours for queens um and kind of really, really enjoyed my first year. And towards the end of it, I had a bit of a careers crisis where I thought that maybe I didn't want to teach, um, maybe that wasn't the right role for me. Um, sorry, there is some building work going on outside. Um, I hope you can still hear me. But yes, I kind of had a bit of a freak out and really, really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, so I had a chat with my university professional tutor, which was really helpful. And I also went to a few talks that were run by different businesses at Queen's. And one of them was um, an organisation which organised um, things like Camp America and stuff like that. And I got in contact with them and they ended up um, getting me a placement to go and work in Spain for the summer. So I went over to um, a lovely place near Marbella in the south of Spain and I spent my first university summer kind of working there, looking after some children, learning Spanish and teaching English there. Um, and that was amazing. That was a really like kind of um, life changing uh, place for me. Um, where I realised that I kind of didn't need to have a career when I finished university, like straight away. I met a lot of different people who were travelling around um, and I realised that there were kind of like loads of different things I could do and doing an English degree or a humanities degree didn't lump me into doing just the one career. Um, so that was really, really um, great opportunity for me. Um, when I came back to Queen's for my second year, I got really involved with the Widening Participation Unit and started to do a lot of outreach stuff with the university. So I started to um, help to run workshops for primary uh, school children um, who might be the first in their family to go to university and kind of really work with some of the deprived communities around Northern Ireland. Um, and I found that so rewarding, probably the most rewarding experience that I um, had had. had. Um, I met some really, really interesting people from all over Queens and I met some people who um, really kind of motivated me and helped me to um, 
to think about what I actually wanted and to think of education as or, or my education path and my degree as um, more of an experience than a direct route into a career. Um, and from there, I ended up going and spending my summer in America where I worked um, for a camp uh, for young girls and um, doing a lot of uh, empowerment work with young girls in America and um, sort of building them up to um, feel like they can, they are equals and have the same opportunities. Um, the the camp was um, a no technology camp and uh, fully, fully outdoors. We were living in the woods for the whole duration of it. Um, and that was really, really great for the kids, especially some um, of the girls who had sort of had no confidence in society without things like makeup or their phones or things like that. So that was really, really great. Um, yeah, I loved it. Um, and kind of ignited that passion again to work with young people and, um, yeah, to work, I, I, it was nice to get to work with them sort of outside of an educational setting and do, um, different kinds of workshops and things with them. Um, and I, from there, um, went on to graduate from Queen's in 2017 and uh, ended up continuing on to do my masters. Um, I ended up moving to Sussex to do my masters because they had um, a masters which was really, really kind of exactly what I wanted um, in the international development sector. At this point, I still thought that I wanted to teach, but I didn't the experiences that Queen's had given me made me feel like I could become a better teacher if I had more life experience. So it was really important for me at that point that I didn't just kind of graduate from my degree and become a teacher straight away because I wanted to have experiences that I could bring to the classroom and bring to young people to help them become rounded people. I think that school is so much more than just your kind of academic education. I think it it, it was really important to me that I was able to shape children as citizens. So I really wanted to get some more life experience. So I decided that I wanted to do an international development masters. Um, and I did get accepted onto a master at Queens, but I actually got accepted onto kind of a dream course for me at Sussex. So I left Belfast, which was one of the most heartbreaking things. I still think of Belfast as my home. And I think that Queens, I just wouldn't be who I am today without Queens and the people that I met um, at Queens. Um, but yes, I ended up moving to Brighton and uh, my master's degree is in gender violence and conflicts. And when I went into the masters, I knew that I wanted to do some work in India. So when I was writing my thesis, I got the opportunity to move out to India. Um, and become a research assistant for a charitable organisation called Men Against Violence and Abuse. Um, kind of the name says exactly what it does. Um, it was about working with men, especially in deprived communities in Bombay, to uh, prevent abuse against women. Um, it was really, really tricky for me to kind of set that placement up. I had to do it all myself but luckily whilst I had been at Queen's I was given the opportunity to kind of sort some placements out. I, I went to college in America for a while um, and had a lot of support with that at Queen's um, but had kind of been taught the skills to set things like that up. So I went out to um, Mumbai and I didn't know anybody and uh, going out there was probably the scariest experience of my life. Um, but I did make some amazing friends and I got to work with this brilliant, brilliant organisation. Um, I got to do some really great research with them, which benefited them and also write my thesis at the same time. So kind of a win-win situation really. Um, and yeah, I worked a lot with um, boys who were at college. So between the ages of 16 and 18, running workshops, discussing uh, the treatment of women in their society, uh, especially by sort of the 
older generation of men and how they wanted to improve it and what they already knew. We did a lot of um, training around sexuality uh, and around transgender people, which is kind of still a very, um, ca can be a very frowned upon thing in some Indian societies. Um, so that was really, really um, brilliant. That was such a great opportunity for me. I'm still really in contact with the charity and would love to go and do some more work with them at some point. Um, during that my master's year, I was also able to do some research for Sussex University, um, kind of looking at a similar thing, um, but running workshops within the university on uh, respect, equality and diversity. Um, it was a pilot scheme which was run in Sussex University and is now being rolled out across other universities. Um, but essentially my job was to help train up a group of students to run workshops um, on equality and diversity and then also to conduct a research report on how successful it was, on the levels of participation um, of people going to these workshops um, and things like that. And it was a great success. Um, the pilot has now been funded into a fully um, fully blown uh, scheme which is running at multiple universities so that's great. Um, when I graduated from my masters I still didn't feel like I had enough kind of life experience to the, the life experience that I felt like I needed to become a secondary school teacher so at this point I had um, lived in Spain, I'd lived in America, I'd lived in India, I'd got to work with like a lot of different groups of, of children and young people but I just felt like I was still 23 and I wanted to to do something else so I started working in hospitality, I had been throughout my master's degree and I continued to work in hospitality and my goal was kind of um, to work in hospitality for a bit, to make some money and to go travelling, maybe to do a bit of uh, some kind of volunteering with other, other young people abroad. Um, but in hospitality, as I'm sure many of you know, I just could never really make a sustainable living where I could sustain myself in my city as well as saving money to do that traveling. So it kind of never really ended up happening. Um, I just ended up working a lot of hours. Um, I met some really amazing people and I'm, I am really glad that I took that year to do that. Um, but it kind of didn't end up being what I wanted it to be. Um, but it did really, really help me to establish myself in the city and, and create the really solid friendship base that I have now. Um, I, during that year, I ended up being, uh, offered a job at British Airways to become an air hostess, um, because one of my customers had worked for British Airways and I kind of thought that that would be a great opportunity to make a bit of money and go traveling at the same time so I decided that yeah I was gonna do it I was going to uh, work for British Airways and I turned down um, a couple of volunteering charity jobs that I had been offered because of this um, Brighton as a city is I, I had really wanted to work in the charity sector for a while but Brighton as a city is um, doesn't have a huge amount of um, charitable organisations which are based here and I really didn't want to move out of it so that was kind of really difficult for me I had taken on some volunteer positions but when I was offered the British Airways job I kind of turned them down and yeah started kind of started on this training program um, with British Airways but they were um, quite a flaky company I found, quite difficult to get in contact with, kind of umming and ahhing about when the training courses were going to run, kind of kept me sort of stringing along for a few months, not really knowing what was happening. Um, they weren't in a rush to get anything sorted and um, it just wasn't working for me. I ended up kind of being in contact with them on and off for about coming up to a year about eight or nine months and they still kind of couldn't really tell me what was happening with my job or uh, when my training would properly be or when it would finish or anything like that so at that point in time I'd had a year since my master's 
work in the charity sector kind of wasn't happening for me in Brighton and I wasn't ready to leave the city and this British Airways job which I thought would help me to travel was also not happening for me so I decided at that point that even though I hadn't felt quite ready um, that I would apply to a teaching degree um, and I applied to a few different teaching courses um, and there are lots and lots of routes into teaching which I think people kind of don't really realise. Um, I ended up doing a route called Schools Direct where you are kind of placed with a school um, and you have a university link. So I worked at a school in, in West Sussex and had a link with Sussex University um, and found it um, so rewarding from kind of day one. Um, it was definitely the most nerve wracking thing I've ever done in my life. My interview was to teach a year eight class of 13 year olds. I had never taught before. I had kind of worked with with young people to do workshops and things like that, but they're a lot more interactive than lessons were. I had never kind of led from the front like that. Um, so that was really scary, but um, it obviously went okay. <laughs> I, I got the position and um, yeah, went on to my te te teacher training in September of 2019. Um, that was an absolutely exhausting year. Um, I think a lot of people say that teacher training is one of the hardest years of your career if you become a teacher. I don't know if I've been in the career long enough to confirm or deny that, but I can definitely say that it was exhausting. Um, funding for teaching degrees is um, quite limited. It's becoming even more limited. So I was having to work at the same time. I would go to school Monday to Thursday, university on a Friday, and then Friday nights, Saturdays and Sundays, I would work at the same restaurant I had been the year before. So I was on all the time. I was lesson planning and marking in the evening. I was still writing university assignments. I was absolutely shattered. And uh, when the pandemic came in the March, I, we, our placement stopped and I absolutely crashed. Um, I, yeah, honestly, at first the pandemic was a bit of a, um, I was I was slightly grateful for it because I don't know if I would have been able to keep going at the rate that I was. Um, luckily for me, I had been offered a job just before the pandemic hit and the job that I had been offered was to start in June. So I had a couple of months um, between finishing my teacher training and starting my job where kind of nothing was happening. Um, and then I started my job in June and I started teaching online, which is not something I think any teacher had ever planned to do. Um, was a massive learning curve, as, as were a lot of things during the pandemic. Um, but found it really rewarding, you know, found that I um, was kind of getting to know some students online, which was really nice. Um, and yeah, it was great. And then I went and started in school in the September and uh, have been at the school for um, just over a year now. Um, during the year, I have been offered a couple of other, uh, have, have been involved in a couple of other things. I do some mentoring. So I do mentoring for uh, pupil premium students, which are students who are um, often economically deprived, um, economically or socially deprived in some way. Um, and I also work with um, the women's voice group that we have in school. Um, I do some mentoring there and I, I help run some, run and facilitate some workshop sessions, which is kind of more like the stuff that I had been doing before. Um, but yeah, I have found, I have found teaching I'm still very early in my career, but I have found teaching so incredibly rewarding. I absolutely love it. Um, I think that the skills that I learned at Queen's, the things that I was able to do um, in terms of student ambassador, in terms of working for the WPU, um, in terms of the trips abroad, going to uh, college in America, work at uh, 
working in Spain, which they helped to set up for me, all of that really, really helped prepare me for being able to teach. It gave me a huge amount of confidence. It also allowed me to be independent and kind of gave me guidance on how to do things whilst ensuring that I did them myself, um, which I think are things that you kind of don't necessarily learn whilst you're at school. Um, the people that I have met at Queen's are still some of my best friends now. Um, during the pandemic, I started a podcast with one of my best friends from Queen's University. She had gone on to live in the Netherlands. Um, I was living in the south of England because obviously of the lack of travel. We weren't able to see each other. So we now host a podcast together called Wise Up. Um, and that has been phenomenal. I was loosely involved in uh, the radio society whilst I was at Queen's. Um, and kind of never imagined that I would be able to host a podcast that actually has listeners. Um, so that's um, really cool. Um, yeah, I still think of Queen's as my home and whenever I go back, I go over there. I kind of regularly email a couple of the lecturers that really, really helped me and they continue to email me their work, which is super helpful, especially my, I, I'm a history teacher. So especially my history lecturers who are able to email me articles that they've written and kind of really up to date research, which is amazing to be able to bring to the classroom. Um, the academic side of Queen's, in terms of my course itself, the breadth that I was, the, the choice that I had over my modules, which uh, for both history and English was pretty much, I was able to choose everything apart from, I think in my first year, my English modules were chosen for me, but everything else I had complete choice over. So the breadth of knowledge that I was able to give myself has really helped me to be able to diversify my school's history curriculum. Um, I am currently in the middle of planning and proposing a Northern Irish history unit, which um, shockingly few English schools actually have. And I just think is so important um, that, like I said, the lecturers are still there helping me now. Um, there are some great yeah, people around Queen's that that always keep in contact with me and and drop me emails say hello um which is so lovely queens really did feel like kind of family for me um i will never forget my time at queens at all um but i think for me working with the WPU and being able to work with kind of primary school children from deprived areas of Belfast really like that kind of helped to settle my mind that teaching was definitely what I wanted to do. I think it's often society kind of puts it on graduates who have English and or humanities degrees that of course that's what you're going to do because that's your career option but actually it really is a passion for me. Um, and that really helped me to realise that I wanted to work with young people and specifically young people from deprived areas. Um, in terms of my career now, I think that people massively underestimate the hours that go into teaching. Um, I leave my house by seven o'clock most mornings and it is not uncommon for me to get home, you know, half five six i would say um the last week of term has been quite lovely because i've been able to leave nice and early um there is always extra your your job is never finished there is always extra things you can do there are always kind of students that you care about that you want the lesson to be tailored for them in a certain way there are always more things you can plan there are always more parents you can contact it's a job that is never finished and it has been really, really important to be able to prioritise tasks in, uh, otherwise I would be, live at school. Um, so that has been, I think I underestimated kind of how much, how never ending the to-do list is. And the fact that you just can't, like it, it is impossible to do it all. I am a person who loves to finish things and it, you just can't do it. 
Um, so I think I definitely underestimated that. Um, working with young people is just so rewarding though. There is seeing the difference in their progress, both academically and as people is phenomenal. Having kids come and tell you that they love your subject or they have a great lesson, having kids email you over Christmas to say happy Christmas because they have built relationships with you. Um, back in May, I had a group of students uh, invite me to a birthday party in my classroom for me, where they had baked me cupcakes and decorated my classroom and hid in a cupboard. Um, but it honestly is phenomenal. Um, lots of people have said to me that they think they would enjoy teaching, but they think it would get really samey, um, which always shocks me because I have never done anything which has been so varied in my life. Um, I remember running workshops when I was at university and sometimes they felt quite samey. Um, adults often tend to react, in my experience, at the, the older people get this more similar or more professional, I think, their reactions tend to be to things. So when I was running adult, when I was running workshops for adults and university students, it would be very much sitting in a room with people who would comply and do exactly what you wanted, which is great. But working with students is so, you can just never predict what they're gonna do. Um, I could teach the same lesson four times in a week and it would never be the same. Um, yeah, and just having, having, knowing that you can shape their future and knowing that as well as being able to shape their future, you can really make students feel seen and feel represented. Um, we taught kind of based around what happened last summer. We planned and taught a unit on British civil rights this year, which is something that I had never kind of in terms of, of racial civil rights, which is something that I had never looked at myself. So I had to do a huge amount of research around it, um, which is something that I also underestimated in terms of changing the curriculum. Uh, the amount of research that goes into it is huge. Um, but having students, especially young BAME students, uh, Sussex is very, very white as a county. So having young BAME students come up to you and tell you that they have really enjoyed the unit, they feel really seen by it, um, they feel really respected. I think it is such a great thing to be able to do. Um, and just knowing that I have had some part in that in making people feel included um, is so great. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if I've got anything else to say. I kind of, in terms of career goals, I don't know what I would like to do longer term. I, I definitely want to stay in teaching and in education. I think that I would quite like to write policy. I think that education is insanely important and insanely politicised. I would love to help write policy around uh, history curriculum and or sex education, which I think are both um, highly politicised at the moment and, and vary greatly across um, the United Kingdom in terms of how they are taught. So I'd love to be able to do that at some point. Um, but kind of shorter time, shorter term, I really want to... Um, yeah, stay at the school I'm at, um, go into pastoral and looking after the kids' well-being. Um, you've made some tough decisions. What has that taught you? Um, I have definitely made some really tough decisions since my time at university and during my time at university. And I think the main thing for me is no matter how much I have doubted myself when I've made some of those decisions, which I definitely have. Um, I think that there are, I'm going to say this, to an extent, there are no wrong decisions. I think that everything can teach you something. Um, I think the, the decision, the people that I have met because of the choices I've made are, I couldn't, I don't, I can't imagine my life without the people that I've met. Um, at university, on my travels, uh, in in 
the different organisations that I've worked for. And yeah, I just think that things come around. If you've done something and it's not right for you, then make another decision and find something else. I don't think that careers these days have to be linear. Um, I felt a huge amount of pressure coming out of university to know what I wanted to do. I felt that uh, from my family, I think a lot, to kind of know what I wanted to do, to get a job, to settle down, to make money for myself. And actually it's okay to just take a break, to figure the things out, to try different careers. Um, you don't have to get it right first time, I think. I don't know if anybody else has any questions for me. I hope I haven't spoken too fast. <laughs> I think overall I would just say that, especially if you're still at university, take as many opportunities as you can, whatever that looks like for you, whether that looks for joining different, looks like joining different societies, getting involved more in the academic side of things, going and doing a semester abroad. I think take the opportunities whilst they're there um, and make connections. I know that when I was at university, I have got lots of different people on Facebook from the different departments that I worked for. I've got loads of connections on LinkedIn and that has been kind of invaluable to me in terms of being able to set up placements, in terms of being able to still access work from my lecturers, things like that. Um, and I know that if I ever kind of freaked out or needed some guidance, some of those people would be there for me. Um, which is always really comforting to know. Cool. I think, unless anybody has any questions for me, I think that's what I've got to say for you. Thank you so much to everyone who's kind of joined at whatever point. Um, I'm going to have a go now to save this to IGTV so if you do want to um, watch again or if you've got any questions you can comment them down there I'm sure I can check it out and reply to them um, but yeah thank you so much and good luck Queen's is such a great place to be um, and I know that they'll have given you the best start to your career that you could get so thank you so much enjoy the sun everyone bye